We'll focus next on FlexiCapture data types, a uh, brief discussion about why we want to improve recognition quality, and we'll talk about out-of-the-box data types as well as custom data types. And finally, we'll touch on recognition options. So in a capture workflow, the most time-consuming portion is the verification stage. Anything that we can do to improve OCR results will result in less need for verification. And further, if we have poor quality data coming in, resulting in poor OCR results, we want to make sure that that data is clean before it gets exported. And so there's some really important reasons to improve recognition quality. If our software could think out loud and say what it was thinking, maybe this is what it would say. If we circled an area to, to recognize, it might be asking itself, what is this? Is this date? Is this text? Is it currency? So if we can give it a hint about what data it's expecting, it can reduce the number of characters that it will look for and therefore uh, the results will go up. So we have approximately 75, 77 out-of-the-box data types. Here we see listed eight, but for the address data type, there's subsets of like city, state, zip, street address. And we can keep it generic. If we've got a field where we don't know what kind of address data is going to be entered, we can just use this kind of overarching category address and it's going to do its best to find the data. But if we know specifically that we've got a zip code field, then a subset, a sub data type of the address data type is zip code. So we can get much better results because then if it's a zip code, you can imagine what the alphabet might look for. It's very restricted to just numbers, maybe dashes. So um, we also have some linguistic components that help the OCR engines make good decisions. And usually one of these 77 data types will fit your needs, but if not, you can create your own data type with a combination of dictionaries and or regular expressions and or alphabet selections. So that's a pretty powerful combination uh, that you can put into place to tell the software what kind of data it should expect. And on the data tab, we've got um, three different edit buttons. And the topmost edit button and the bottommost edit button are actually related. So the topmost edit button is all about selecting a data type. And the bottommost button is about setting validation parameters. Um, those are restrictive. Uh, the data types help coax the OCR engines in the right direction. The validation locks down field settings, and if the data doesn't match those criteria, then um, then an error condition is, is set. So um, how these are linked, if I um, selected a date um, data type right here, uh, down here, if I then click this edit button, um, the interface would adjust and it would say, would you like to uh, specify a certain date range? And when you think about date ranges um, and OCR problems, a date range could, a valid date range could really catch OCR problems that you might not otherwise catch. Uh, similarly, if I entered at the top a currency value, then um, this bottom edit button would say, do you want to specify a minimum and a maximum currency value? And when you think about monetary fields, there usually is reasonable minimal, minimum and maximum amounts. So it's very powerful um, that, that those two are linked. Um, and the middle edit button is something that should not be ignored. Um, that edit button allows you to do normalization, value conversion, you can eliminate uh, preceding colons, semicolons, dashes. You can delete text. You can do search and replace without coding, or you can also write script. So it's really a powerful combination of features to make sure that your data is cleaned up properly before it's sent even to verification or export. And speaking of a script, this is a, a sample uh, autocorrection script that simply counts 
the number of low confidence characters. They're referred to as is suspicious. So we're looping through all the characters in a field and we're counting how many suspicious characters there are. And if um, there are too many suspicious characters, we're marking that field, we're emptying that field because it's faster to type let's say the field is only five characters long, it's faster just to type the correct answer than to make three corrections. So I've, I've modified the script in a variety of ways and it's been very useful. This is a topic that really requires some exploration on your part. There's a lot of power in data types. Um, you certainly can uh, improve recognition quality. You can create your own custom data types and um, basically you should allocate enough time editing your document definition and playing with data types so that you uh, uh, are doing the best you can before a verifier even sees the data. And that time investment will give you an exponential return on investment because if you reduce keystrokes in a verification station or if you catch errors before they're exported um, or eliminate uh, the possibility of exported errors, you're going to be saving a lot of time post-flexi-capture.